Oh, ho. oh, big crappie. Whoa. All right, well, I'm, I'm out here this morning on a private pond west of Davenport with my buddy Matthew and Greg Ferris, inventor of the Trident Explorer watercraft. There he is over there. It's not a boat, it's not a kayak. Oh, yeah, it's a little one. And, uh, I think I'm going to get to take it for a take it for a spin a little bit. Very very neat concept. I will uh, link Greg Greg's uh, website in the in the description of uh, today's video. And uh, in a little bit, I'll have Greg tell you more about it. Oh! But right now we are just too busy catching fish. Got him. There's a nice one. There we go. <laughs> oh, -ho! oh, big crappie. Whoa. Oh, come here. Oh, this might be 14. Wow, Matt, look at that. Good. So that's three species we've caught so far this morning already. Oh, close. 13, 13 and three quarters. Is that the biggest crappie you've ever caught? It is the biggest crappie I've ever caught, yeah. Okay, so again, I'm out here with Greg Ferris, the inventor of the Trident Explorer watercraft. Uh, Greg, why don't you tell us about this very unique vessel that you're on top of? Yeah, so this uh, the Trident Explorer, we just got out here this morning, beautiful morning here in Iowa, and uh, you know, pulled, a, pulled the Trident out of the truck, put all the gear on it, picked up the front, wheeled it down into the water, and we're fishing. So, so why, so, so first explain the design, and then why, why you did this instead of the kayak that I'm in? Yeah, so... For me, it started with fishing from a kayak and, and loving it, but the conditions had to be just perfect for it to really be truly fun. Uh, wind was always just the moral enemy. So how do, we, how do we make something that's simple, really, really maneuverable, but lets us deal with wind or current while we're fishing? So you're not having to constantly pick up the paddle and set it down uh, while you're out. So looking at you know the paddle it's, it's a great solution right everyone understands it it's uh virtually nothing can go wrong with it the only problem was we we're using the, the thing we need to use to fish is our hands so we keep having to alternate so this allows you to never stop fishing um, and you're just thinking about where's my next cast and you're making small adjustments like this to, with your feet to move yourself but you can pivot about a point. Look at that. And if you're thinking about when you're fishing, what you really need to do, any time this is what you need to do. And a pedal drive kayak is great for 
going from point A to point B. It's it's definitely faster than the Trident Explorer going point A to point B. But the challenge with it is that it doesn't give you the ability to do what I just did, uh, which is what you're going to do in the course of a day of fishing over and over and over. Yes. <laughs> so. Yeah. So um, so just the short time we've been out here on on this uh, private pond, I I I've spent a good amount of time just redirecting my kayak with my paddle. I got to put my pole down. Right. I've got to I've got to use the use the paddle with my hands, get adjusted, pick the paddle back up, but it seems with this design you've solved all that. Yeah, I'm just really, you know, not I I never stop fishing. I just keep working my way down a shoreline and that's how I love to fish. Um, you know, and this is perfect conditions right here. Um, where where it really where the trident really shines is when the conditions are less than perfect. When you have 10 to 15 mile an hour winds, um, that's when you start to really struggle with a, a paddle driven yes. uh, kayak. So, uh, and the other aspect of this uh, design is, you notice the the hole. It's definitely different, right? Right. Here, let me let me just move myself in front of you here. So the paddle just pops right out. So if you're if you just want to push yourself off from shore, whatever, you can use the paddle just like you'd normally use a paddle. <laughs> Hang on a second, Greg. I'm in a kayak, so I have to turn around. <laughs> yeah, th this is not scripted, folks. This is exactly what Greg's talking about. I have to, I have to take 30 seconds, a minute, to do a full 360 so I can get repositioned again. All right, there we go. pontoons are in the water right so it's 48 inches wide still fits in the bed of your truck but you're not pushing a 48 inch wide hole through the water you have these gaps right here but having the outer pontoons really gives you the stability where anybody can stand look at that so really you know comfortable up here but really the money shot is when you sit back and lean here so when I'm doing this, I'm anchored to the stability of the boat. It's naturally stable. If a, you know, a big one boat powered by me and there's a wake, I wouldn't sit down. I'd just stay right here. I feel comfortable. I fish uh, with my cell phone in my pocket generally because I'm, I'm comfortable that I'm not going for a swim. Oh. <laughs> so if you're, you know, you're standing and you're, you want to pick the paddle up, you can stand up paddle to, to move yourself around a little bit and really uh, you have this really simple nest that you just drop the pin into I'm not really doing a very good job right here so uh, some other features you have all of this storage on board so keep the pliers here lures a can of soda my plastics over here, plain old tackle boxes, soft-sided cooler, milk crate behind me. We're fishing a little pond. I knew I was only going to be out here for an hour, so I just kept it real simple. Today. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I'm on a nine-foot kayak. I, I enjoy my kayak, but I am so crowded in here, just with a minimal amount of gear. I'm wearing some of my gear. You know, I'm, I, I have to struggle to reach to put a fish in a bucket behind me. And with the Trident, it looks like there's just plenty of room to move around and easy yeah. to get to your gear. And that being able to move around is the key to comfort. Yeah. So you look at this seat and you can see, it's like I'm sitting in a, in a chair at home. You know, comfortable because I'm, I'm elevated, my legs aren't straight out for me. Um, but really the key to comfort is being able to move around. So I'm able to, to do stuff like this, which you just can't really do very easily in a regular kayak um so so greg speaking of the chair you've got some experience in chair design tell me about that yeah yeah my uh i've, I've designed office chairs in the past so a few different uh, office chairs uh the ergonomics are the same um so really this this aspect of the design was was uh, what i would say the easiest for me to to figure out um, and, you know, utilizing this uh, breathable mesh, um, you know, it conforms to your body and it's just a, a simple way to deal with uh, creating something that's not going to, you know, 
uh, stay wet like an idewy morning and uh, you know readily available. All right, so what else can you tell? Now the wheels, you got wheels on the back of it. Tell me about that. Yeah, so when it comes to starting out your day, you, you can come to wherever you're gonna fish, put all of your gear on the boat, and then you'll notice the integrated handle in the front. So you just pick it up and you wheel it down to the water and off you go. Um, another thing that really makes transportation easier is you notice this large uh, hatch in the front. Yes. So that opens up um, from the from the front or the back, depending on uh, if you're on the water, you'd open it up from the from the back to, to access that storage area. But what's great about the front is you can store your fishing poles and your paddle inside the boat. So and you don't have to break them down. How how long of a pole can we get in there? Seven and a half foot. Wow. So you can. And that's typical length for a bass pole, right? A good size, yeah, flipping rod, yeah. So. Uh, that was a real problem when we were doing market research that people struggle with is transporting their rods, um, you know, sticking them out the window of their, of their truck or they put them in the bed and then they're just hanging out there. So if you stop for something to eat, you have right. to worry about, you know, somebody walking off with, with, uh, with your gear. So. And uh, the whole craft weighs about how much? About 150 pounds. Not bad. It's about uh, 10 foot 4 inches long. Um, and another thing I'll mention to you, we have the transom in the back. So, oh, yeah. get my fishing pole here. I said, when I paddled over to you, I decided I'd do a little trolling. <laughs> <laughs> We're um, not going to call that cheating. Uh, <laughs> so, so uh, the transom. Yeah, so with the transom, you can clamp on a standard, like, Minn Kota, um, 30 pound trolling motor is perfect for this. And I use that if I'm fishing a bigger body of water. I would never put it on in a, in a pond of this size or smaller. But if I was going to go fish a 100 acre lake and I really wanted to cover the whole thing, uh, I might, you know, throw that trolling motor on there just so I could go some, from spot to spot uh, and just save time and effort um, doing that. So where a, where a pedal drive might be faster than the Trident Explorer, when it comes to that speed, you just put the trolling motor on and then you can get from spot to spot. But while you're fishing, this is going to be a much more effective tool. Yeah. So they're available now, right? Yep. yep. Now you've been working on this, you told me, for about four years. Right. So how long have they, how long have they been available? How long have they been ready to go? We just started selling this, this season. This season. This spring, okay. And uh, uh, we're manufacturing them in Muscatine, Iowa. Uh, all the components are, are made in Iowa, so the hulls in Ackley, the chairs in Makokita, so supporting our local businesses, Great. Uh, which I, I absolutely love. That was one of the tenets of, of doing this was we're going to support you know, companies that are near and dear to us, and um, having those good relationships really helps in, in these times where supply chain issues are, right. are a challenge. So having relationships with people makes a big difference versus some somebody over in China that you just hope someday send you something. <laughs> so with all that in mind, if someone were to order one today, when might they put it on the water? Uh, typically I call it the standard lead time is six weeks. Six weeks, that's not bad. I, I build them in, in batches at this point, so the, the lead time depends on where we are and uh, you know in a, in a build. So. We have four boats that are being built right now, and um, and we have you know uh, some additional units uh, demanded or you know some demand from from some local stores. So we need well, to keep going. So I'm going to put the website in the description, but go ahead and mention a website where people can go and watch some videos and learn more about the Trident. Yeah. Um, here, let me spin around. Um, yeah, it's easier for you to spin. <laughs> That's one of the beauties of it. <laughs> so the, the website is uh, www.adventuredesignswatercraft.com. Adventuresdesignswatercraft.com. Greg Ferris, the inventor. And bring one out to, to this private pond today. And he's going to let me tool around on it here in a little bit. And so I will get on and share with you folks uh, what I think. But what I've seen so far, and just watching Greg maneuver around the water, um, catching fish, being able to do that all hands-free, 
just very, very impressive. I can't wait to get on board. Well, Greg, thanks for coming out with us this morning. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun. All right.